we showed you how to dimension an impedance matching network earlier. Today we show you how to do that super fast with the help of a Smith chart. In an earlier episode, I've linked it to you here on the top right, we have already calculated, built and measured various loop antennas. We have seen that the antennas all work very well. That's why I gave instructions on how to calculate and build them yourself. Since the antenna have very high impedance, we needed a suitable impedance matching network. And yes, if we are talking about high frequency engineering, then of course I have to explain to you how impedance matching is represented in the Smith chart. It's very interesting and we learn something from it. Many high frequency technology engineers can deal with it so well that they first consider what a solution looks like in the Smith chart and only then consider how to implement it in hardware in a second step. In earlier episodes we have looked at two different solutions for a matching network. A with a quarter wave transformer here on the left side and B with a slightly more complicated two elements network on the right. If you want to be informed about new videos, please subscribe the channel and don't forget to like the video. Let's first consider the simpler case with the quarter wave transformer. You can see here directly in this mist chart how a piece of waveguide with a quarter wavelength transforms our transmitter impedance from 50 ohms to a higher impedance. If our transformer line has a characteristic impedance of ZL equal to 100 ohms, we can use it to transform 50 ohms to 200 ohms. With a characteristic impedance of 200 ohms, we get 800 ohms and with a characteristic impedance of 300 ohms, we get 1800 ohms. Since a waveguide with 300 ohms is already quite wide, you can hardly achieve a higher transformation ratio with this principle. However, antennas sometimes have even higher impedances than 1800 ohms. And that's why I introduced the second, somewhat more complicated principle. Personally, I like it better because it makes it easier to build a stable construction with wires. I will link you the earlier videos on that in the upper right corner. So, on our sketch of the antenna, we see the stub shorted at the end here. In the Smith chart, the stub is shown in light blue. It runs along an admittance line. The shorter the stub, the longer the light blue line will be. With a length of zero, it would go all the way to zero since then it would be undoubtedly represent a short circuit. The second piece of waveguide is connected in series and shown in red in the Smith chart. And here it becomes clear once again that the Smith chart is simply ingenious. You can see immediately that you can realize a much larger transformation ratio with this principle. You don't need the high waveguide impedance as with the simple quarter wave transformer. The video is not intended to be an extensive tutorial on the Smith chart. There is others who do it better, but stay tuned. Now comes a demo with an online tool 
that will help you to understand the method very quickly. I recently saw a nice online tool on the YouTube channel Mein Electronic Hobby. I think this Smith chart online tool is very nicely done. So I put the link below the video. I want to show you briefly. You can enter the frequency and even a frequency span at the top. Then we have the characteristic impedance to which the Smith chart is normalized. Furthermore, we can now select serial and parallel elements. It's great that the waveguide elements that are so important for higher frequencies are also included. Really nicely done. Then below we have the Smith chart. Now let's do a test with a quarter wave transformer. We enter the frequency that interests us. We take 300 ohms as a characteristic impedance. In principle this can be arbitrary since it is only a normalization. I choose 300 ohms to make good use of the Smith chart area for our purpose. Then we select the series element set 0 because we will use it as our quarter wave transformer. So now we see a black box here which could be our transmitter with the connected piece of waveguide for which we can now enter the characteristic impedance and the length. We insert 100 ohms and the length of 31.3 mm which corresponds to a quarter of the wavelength at our frequency. We can now check out what happens if we increase the impedance of the transformer waveguide. Unlike before, however, I always left the characteristic impedance the same because with the online Smith chart I don't have the problem of having to know the center point if I want to draw a cycle. And yes, we are getting the same results that we saw earlier in our Smith chart. Ok, this works very well. We could check the results with simple calculations. That's the point of a test. I will link you the video on the top right here. Next we try our matching network with the stub and the serial waveguide element. And this is where it gets really interesting, because the calculation for this is quite complicated. We also have a video about this. The link is at the top right. For this example, let's also try the frequency span feature right away. We enter 100 MHz. We have already entered our stub and series waveguide element and we can see immediately how the impedances are transformed. We chose already 200 ohms as the impedance for the two elements. You can already see the principle of our impedance matching network quite well. Ok. Now let's use the values we calculated earlier for our loop antenna. The stub has a length of 4.37 mm and a waveguide impedance of 219 ohms. The serial waveguide is 27 mm long and also has an impedance of 219 ohms. We increase the letter until we reach the real axis of the Smith chart. So we would have now a matching network that transforms the 50 ohms of our transmitter output to the high impedance of an antenna. The red line now shows us the effect of our frequency span 
of plus and minus 100 megahertz. And what I particularly like about this online tool is the fact that you can work with the Smith chart, but you don't have to know the effect of the individual elements by heart. Really nice. Thanks to Will Kelsey for the nice online tool. The summary. The Smith chart is something of the holy grail of high frequency engineering. We have shown you how the proposed matching networks work. The paper Smith chart is still relevant today, although it was invented already in 1939. Of course, the online version is great. On the one hand, you don't have to draw the circles yourself, and on the other hand, you don't have to know the effect of the individual elements by heart. I hope you enjoyed this episode. On our channel we cover occasionally high frequency technology, antennas and wave propagation. But there are also a lot of other topics that we have sorted under our new playlists now. So just check it out. Now stay tuned and don't forget to subscribe and support the channel. See you soon in the coming episodes.